All right, this is EENG460, and this is uh, video number seven. Well, today we're going to look at the uh, data segment. Up to now, we've looked at three or four programs that had stuff in the text segment, but nothing in the data segment. Now, you've got your tabs here, data, floating point registers, integer registers. We've looked at that text. Uh, I don't have a program loaded, so the text segment is empty, and so is the data segment. Now, what you'll notice here is our data can exist in memory from 1,000 quad zero to 1,004 quad zero. So my first question is, how big of a chunk of memory is that? Well, it goes from 1,000 quad zero to 1,004 quad zero. So let's bring in a calculator here. Now, this is just a calculator on the PC. You can do standard, scientific, programmer. I go to Programmer, and it looks like I've got 1,000 quad zero to 1,004 quad zero. So I've got like four quad zero. So let's go to Hex and do four, one, two, three, four quad zero. And then I'm going to convert that to decimal. So I've got 262,144 memory location or bytes, 262,144 bytes. If I divide that by a K, which is 1024, 2 to the 10th, then that's 256. So I've got roughly 256 um, K, 256 K of user memory that I can use. And supposedly it starts at 1000 quad zero. All right. So let's um, open up a file and see how we use that memory. All right. And let's see. Yeah, here is the file we're going to talk about today. Let's go through this. There's not much here, right? If you look at this file, we have our usual stuff. We've got our comments. You can put anything you want in there. All right, there's our comments. Now, here is my data segment. And you notice I've got stuff in my data segment right now, okay? It's the first time we've seen that. And now, here's my text segment down here. And then after my text, I have the global preprocessor directive that creates a label to identify the beginning of my program, but there's nothing in my program other than a normal termination. Okay, so in this program here, there is no code. It's all data. Okay. Well, let's look at the data segment. Um, I've got labels over here that start in column one and they end with a colon. A1, A2, A3, name, and course. Then here, I declare the data type. So what I'm saying is I want you to reserve memory that will hold an ASCII character string. All right, well, ASCII is an 8-bit, 7-bit rep rep representation, eight, actually, that represents characters and some non-printable characters. And then here I say I want you to create a label called A2 that's also ASCII, and it represents the character 5. And then here I've got a label A3. It also represents, let's change that, let's make that a 4. Yeah. And then... Um, here I've got a label called name, and it's ASCII, which is a string basically, and it's me, Dr. Walsh. And then I've got the course label. It's going to be an ASCII data type, and here it is, EENG460. Now, there's a whole bunch of these directives. You know, you've got ASCII, uh, float, double, and all kinds of stuff. But we're just doing strings. So now the minute I come along here and I load this guy, then this information is going to get put into the data segment which right now is currently empty. So let's do that. Simulator, reinitialize, and then let's load this file. Oh, look what happened to my data segment. Okay. Um, the data segment, which exists from 1000 quad zero to 1004 quad zero, um, now contains data. But notice, 1000 quad zero to 1000 quad F is still all zeros. So I'm not allowed to use that. That must be reserved for something special. So how much, how big is this chunk of memory? Well, it's quad F. What's quad F? Remember what quad F was? Well, if you don't remember, bring up your calculator. Go to hexadecimal. There's quad F. Go back to decimal. 65535. Five, um, yeah, so it's basically 64K. All right, so... Now let's uh, look at our, um, our file and see if we can kind of make some sense out of this. Let me bring this down here and notice. Um, well, actually, before we do that, we need to go look at the ASCII, uh, ASCII, make sure everybody understands what ASCII is. Well, there's an ASCII table. Let's see if I can get this on the screen here. 
And what ASCII is, it's basically an 8-bit representation of characters as well as a bunch of control characters. For example, you've got uh, three columns, decimal, hex, and character. Decimal, hex, character, decimal, hex, character, decimal, hex, character, four columns. So if I want to represent the character um, 1, that would correspond to hex 31. The character M would correspond to hex 4D. The character A would correspond to hex 41 or decimal 65. A lowercase a would be hex 61. An uppercase a would be 41. A space would be hex 20 or decimal 32. So you need to have your ASCII table. Okay. Now let's set that guy aside and bring our file back in here. Okay, well, here's the file. So what I'm doing is I'm saying I want you to create a label called A1 that I can refer to later. I want it to be ASCII data, and I want you to represent 1, 2, and 3 by their ASCII codes. Well, do you remember what the character 1 was? Well, let's bring back our ASCII table. The character 1 was, where's 1? 1 is right here. It's hex 3-1. The character 2 is hex 3, 2, hex 3, 3. The interesting thing about numbers is the character 0, 1 through 9 is just 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, just a 3 in front of it. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I am creating a string that's 1, 2, 3. Well, each one of these guys is 8 bits. 1 is represented by a hex 3, 1. 2 is represented by a hex 3, 2. 3 is represented by a hex 3, 3, and that's what you've got up here. Here is the memory location that corresponds to 1001 quad zero, and it represents the one down here. Then here is your 32. That's at memory location 1001 0001, because it's one byte up, and that represents your two. Then you've got 33, which is the ASCII representation of three. Okay. So this statement has reserved three bytes of memory, starting at 1000 quad zero, and taking up uh, 1,000 quad zero, 1,000 zero zero one, 1,000 zero zero two. Then I come along and say, all right, give me one byte, and um, it'll be five. Well, the ASCII representation of five is three five, and there it is right there, three five, and that one exists at 1,001 zero 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 three. Then I come along and say, okay, now I want to create an ASCII character four. Well, the ASCII representation of four is three four. That goes at the next location, which is right here, three four. Then I want to uh, create Dr. Walsh. Well, what's a capital D? Well, let's bring our ASCII table back in there. A capital D is what? There it is. It's hex 44. Do you see a hex 44 there? There it is. Then I've got a lowercase r. Well, where's a lowercase r? Hex 72. There's your hex 72 right there. Then I've got a period. Well, where's my period? Where's the period here? period looks like a 2e. All right, there's your 2e, and there it is right there. Okay, but now we jump over to the next spot, which is right here, and that's a space. See how I have the space? Space, hex 20. There's hex 20. After the space, I have a w, capital W, which is different from a lowercase w. Capital W is a 57, and there's my 57. You get the idea? Now, the thing that's critical here is the way it counts. This guy starts off at location 1001 quad zero. There is 1001 quad zero. There is 1001 0001. This is 1001 0002. This is 1001 0003. This is 1001 0004. 1001 0005. 1001 0006. 1001 7. 1001 8, 1001 9, 1001 A, 1001 B, 1001 C, 1001 D, 1001 E, 1001 000 F. Now the next one is 1001 0010, which is this guy right here. And then this one would be 1001 0011. 1001 0012, 1001 0013, 1001 0014. Now, what is this location right here? Well, it's the location, no, not that one, but this location right here. Well, that's the one right before this one. 
So that would probably be 1001001F because the next one is 1001020. So we're counting in hex. Now over here, what you're seeing is actually the characters printed out, the ASCII characters. So this E right here corresponds to this location here. This E right here corresponds to this location here. Notice they're both 45. This H right here corresponds to this guy. So using the ASCII table and this data set, you can uh, kind of see how your data is set up. And all that happened is because we just used a label. It's kind of like your variable name. We used a preprocessor directive, and we got a bunch of them. You know, we've got floats and doubles and all kinds. And then we assign the value. So here you can actually define character strings that get stored. All right? Okay, well, that's enough on the data segment. We'll start using that here in a little bit, and I will see you next time.